gotten to do a few months of book reviews. Like the whole summer. So let's talk about the 41 books I read this summer, shall we? <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name's Natalie and I like to talk about books. Except I forget to do recaps every month, so now we gotta do this thing. Okay, let's get into some stats. Over the summer, I read a total of 20, not 21 books. <laughs> Over the summer, I read a total of 41 books. Of those 41 books, I read 20 fantasy books, six mysteries, three literary fictions, one nonfiction, four sci-fis, three dystopian, and four romances. I think I may be a fantasy reader. Even though I say sci-fi is my favorite genre, I think that may be a lie. Now, out of those books, I had 10 five-star reads, nine four-stars, 12 three-stars, four two-stars, four I absolutely hated it, and one I don't even know how to rate it. The total pages I read this summer was 17,450, meaning I read for 290 hours at an average pace of 60 pages per minute. I don't know if that math is right. Please correct me if it's not. But that means I spent 12.08 days reading since April. I've spent half of a month of the last four months reading. Only reading. And you know what? Sadly, that's honestly less days than I thought it would be. But with all that being said, let's do a little recap of the 41 books I've read. Starting with Lightlark and Nightbane. These are a series. I honestly really liked Lightlark and I wanted to see where the series could go. I thought it had a lot of potential. And then all the potential came crashing down in Nightbane and I have no plans of finishing the series now. You're following Isla, who is a leader of one of the six kingdoms in this world. As she goes to work slash compete with the other leaders of the realm to try to break this curse that's been around for 600 years. This book is filled with world building, betrayals, friendship, romance, some decent little fight scenes. And this book, I don't remember anything about it. I just didn't like it. I blocked it out of my head. As Good as Dead. This is the last book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and it fell so flat for me. The first 200 pages of this book are so Good, oh my gosh, six star read material. But then the last 150-ish pages just destroy the story and destroy the likability that Pip had throughout the whole series. Overall, I ended up giving this book just a 2.5. Then we have the Assassin's Game. I don't know where my copy of it is right now. I'm being so honest, <laughs> it's gone. It's honestly just a really easy murder mystery read. If you're looking for something that'll be quick, get you back into reading, this will probably grab your attention. It's based on a high school boarding school campus where they have this game of assassin they play every year, but this one escalates very quickly into not being a game. Overall, I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars, but nothing really to go running to the bookstore over. Next up, Legend. This one is lent out to my nephew because I thought he would just love this book. It's a dual POV book of a dystopian society and you're following someone who is on the outskirts of society that already sees the corruption of this society. And then you're following our other character who is on the inside of the society and she's looked at being one of the smartest young minds to come about recently. And slowly we see her worldview shift to our other character's worldview. There's a little bit of romance in here, lots of action, great young adult book. Overall, gave it three stars. This is a great book that anybody can get into. I don't know if I'll personally continue the series just because there's so much I want to read and it didn't fully grab my attention. But if you are a younger reader or you're looking for something to recommend maybe to a middle school, high school boy, I feel like they would really like this. Where the Crawdads Sing. This was a fun little mystery. You're going between a past and present timeline and it's honestly beautifully written. The scenery she describes in this book, everything like that is just gorgeous. But all in all, I can't remember too much about this book. I had it at a 3.5, but now I'm thinking, since I can't remember too much about it and I only read it a few months ago, it needs to be knocked down to a three. 3.5 and above are books that I will remember a lot of details of for me personally. And if I start noticing that I don't remember a lot of details of a four star read, especially if I read it within the year, I start to question if it was really a four star. Then I took a tiny little break to read a C.S. Lewis book that was just a combination of a bunch of his essays which there is one in here <laughs> where he talks about what aliens would mean if they existed to the Christian faith. It is so interesting and was so random to read in this book, but there's so many good little essays if that's something you're interested in. Truly, I'm not qualified to rate C.S. Lewis books. I'm not smart enough, but I give all of them five stars. First I wins. I listened to this on an audiobook when I was on a road trip to see my parents. So I got all of it within like a weekend of driving back and forth. Amazing. It was a good mystery novel. It kept me on the edge of my seat. The character development was really fun. There was double cross on top of double cross. Fascinating. I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this one four stars. The romance was interesting. The double crossing, all the twists and turns. I really, really enjoyed it. Honestly, if you're going on a road trip, mysteries are just the 
best. After that, I started the Divine Rivals series. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know I love this series. In Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows, you're following two writers for a journal in town. It's kind of a realistic fantasy world, historical fiction mix of genre. But the thing that makes me love this book so much, first off, is Rebecca Ross's writing. It is incredible. Some of my favorite writing I have ever read, and I cannot wait to pick up more of her book soon. And also just the romance in here. Oh, it's the best I've ever read. And then Ruthless Vows, I actually just read recently because I was told I wouldn't like this book as much as I like Divine Rivals, which was true, but I still ended up giving this a four star. It still had the key components that Divine Rivals had in it for me to fall in love with it. I love these books. Go read them if you haven't. And then we had another hit. I started the Powerless series. <laughs> I, I really, really, really love this first book. It is so fun. It's got like Hunger Games characteristics to it and it just pulls from a lot of popular tropes that are just so fun to read. Just know it is going to be very predictable, but such a comfort in that way. And I just enjoyed it so much. The romance in here is also super fun. It's very different than Divine Rivals. The writing is not as good, but overall, this is just a quick, easy, fun fantasy read if you're looking to get somebody into fantasy. Just make sure they're gonna like a romance and all the cliches in here. But overall, had such a good time. Ended up rating this one five stars. Now, Reckless. I know a lot of people don't like this book, but I did. I gave it five stars at the time. And I don't know if it's because everybody else doesn't like this book or what. This is kind of more of a cat and mouse chase. It's very different and a lot shorter than Powerless is. But I just, I really liked it. I had a fun time. I liked the banter. I think her writing got better in this book. I overall just had a good time and rated it five stars, but I question it every day. Maybe it's a four star book, it probably is. But I don't feel fully confident in taking away the five stars I gave it. You can say I have bad book taste for it, but this is my book taste, not yours, okay? I'm sharing my book taste, not your book taste. You can tell me you hate it in the comments and that is perfectly fine, I understand. But for now it's gonna keep its five star rating because I feel too bad to put it back down to four stars. Even though four stars is still a book I loved. And then we have Powerful, which this is a little novella in the series and it made me sob so much. I have never cried so much in a book ever, ever in my life. I can't talk about it much longer, I'll start crying again. So I rated this also five stars. Um, again, the romance in here is so sweet. The characters we're following you know what happens at the end of this book and it still crushes you. And then I did a video about reading the most random book I had on my shelf, which was Go the Distance from the Twisted Tale series, which is retellings of Disney stories and different things that may have happened to change it. I also don't have this one. It is on loan to my niece and nephew right now. I gotta keep the next generation reading. What can I say? Overall, this book is just exactly what you thought it would be. Super simple fantasy. You're following the characters you know and love in those Disney cartoons. I am personally a giant Hercules fan and it has been one of my favorite Disney movies for so long. And now they're turning it into Broadway musical in London and I'm having to hold myself from buying plane tickets over there. Somebody needs to bring it to the States for me, okay? <laughs> Side tangent out of the way. I just love Hercules and this felt like a little taste of my childhood and was so fun to read. If you don't really like Disney movies or you're just not a Disney person, don't pick up these books. Honestly, don't pick up these books unless it's about a certain character that you really, really love. I think that's where you're gonna find the most enjoyment from them. Overall, I gave it three stars. I had a good time. I didn't really have anything to complain about. It was exactly what I thought it would be. I started watching the TV show for The Summer I Turned Pretty and I can pretty confidently say you can just watch the TV show. You're really not missing anything in these books. If anything, Belly is just more annoying. And I probably won't finish the series, but I did have a fun time if you're looking for a fun, easy summer read, especially if you have a younger teenage girl in your life who is looking for a good read, uh, this would be perfect. I would have eaten this up as a kid. And I don't say it's for a teenager as looking down on it. It would just be way more fun to read if you were in the same life stage as her. Overall, I gave it a three stars because I had nothing against it. And just because I say that a younger audience would enjoy it more does not mean it's a bad book. That launched me into my Emily Henry reads. <laughs> I did not read all of these back to back. I just want to talk about all of them at the same time because that makes the most sense in my head. So Happy Place was my first Emily Henry book. And honestly, I did not like it. This book is just miscommunication trope to the max and it drove me insane. I know a lot of people love this book and I am not judging you if you like it. It just did not click for me. I found a lot of the characters pretty annoying and I just, they're all 20 to in their 30s and none of them could seem to communicate ever. And it just was driving me insane. I don't even know if I really like the love story in here. I ended up just giving it three stars because I 
Again, it's a fluffy summer read. I had a good time reading it, okay? Then I picked up Beach Read. And wow, this was a big improvement. The love story in here was so much more fun. The characters were really diverse. You're following these two writers as they have this bet on writing a book in the other writer's genre. They end up moving right next door to each other. I like to say Emily Henry books are disguised as fluffy romances with a little bit of trauma on the side because all of them have it. <laughs> I found myself rooting for the characters a lot more in this one and understanding some of their bad decisions a lot more than I understood the ones in Happy Place. There is a little miscommunication in this one as well, but it's not as bad as Happy Place. Overall, I gave this 4.5 stars. And then I read Book Lovers. And I love book lovers so much. I love this book. The romance is so sweet. The writing is fantastic. You're set in a small town. You have a big city girl come into a small town, but she falls in love with the man that she's known in the big city that has kind of been her work rival. They are not rivals for very long in this book at all. They start their romantic relationship pretty fast or f and their friendship even faster than that because they're both just bonding over how much they hate the small town. This one had me tearing up. There's also a beautiful sister relationship in here. The there's a couple little plot twists that just really tuck at your heartstrings and I adored it. Oh, did I say I rated that five stars? Yeah, I rated that five stars. Also, I think you got moved. Then I read Atomic Habits. If you're wondering, Natalie, you don't normally read nonfiction, you would be right. Being honest, I don't remember much about this book, but it was a good nonfiction book and I feel like it taught me something at the time. I really only read this because everybody in my family said I had to read this. <laughs> Why does it feel like I'm reciting this at gunpoint right now? <laughs> but truly, I really only read this because everybody in my family really liked it. And it does have some really good thoughts and opinions for forming habits, everything like that. Very well written, but I'm, I'm a fiction girly through and through. So I don't feel qualified to rate this. Oh my gosh. six star category because this is a six star book for sure. I feel like if you've watched my channel or quite a few of my shorts, you know I love the Red Rising series so, so freaking much. The first book has these big Hunger Games vibes and they just keep getting more and more intense. It was supposed to stop after the original trilogy and then he picked up writing. There's gonna be four more books in total. This is the third. We're waiting on the fourth still, Red God, and I cannot wait. We don't even have a release date yet, so I'm dying here. But. This is my favorite book of the entire series. In all the books after the saga, you're following multiple POVs instead of just our one main character like we were in the Red Rising series. Oh my gosh. Just go read these books. They are adult sci-fi. That is just really due to the language and violence in these books. They are pretty intense and the pacing is a little different than YA, but it's still fast pacing and doesn't really feel like it drags on like some adult books do. Very, very good. Six million stars, five million. I, how many stars can I give a book? Because that book gets all of them. Then I read the next two books in the Care of All series. I don't like the Care of All series. You're following these girls as they're running away from their dad because he's awful into this Care of All night event that happens where it's very magical, very whimsical. It's a lot of fun. And if it sounds like it's up your alley, go ahead and read it. I just can't stand the main characters in here. Didn't fall in love with the world. Overall, these are like 2.5 star books or three star. I can't remember what I gave them, nor do I really care. Man, I was on a roll with getting some of these series finished. I then read Dance with These and Vow with These. I really love this series. It is advertised as an enemy, enemy, enemy. It is advertised as an enemies to lovers, but it is not. If you are looking for enemies to lovers, this is not your girl but she is very fun. They're enemies for about two seconds and then they're like, wow, you're so hot. Like all of these books. I do believe these stayed spice free. So that was nice. I'm sorry I didn't have spice ratings for the rest of them. I do know some of these books that do have spice have spice guides on the cleaned up romance collection, which I'm a contributor to myself. I've done some of the Emily Henry ones on there and there are so many popular romanticy romance books that are on there. Definitely check it out if you're questioning if you want to read a book due to the spice. We have spice guides with the page numbers, how to skip it, all that good stuff. But these you don't have to worry about that with. Honestly, this is very, why? It's a fairy. Honestly, this is a fairly stereotypical fantasy book. We're following a king that's dad just died. So he had to take over. He's like 18 and we're following a very specialized knight from an other kingdom who is coming to check on that kingdom 
Somehow some stuff happens and they end up chained together like that uh, parkour video game that's pretty popular right now. <laughs> they have to escape the situation and they've been in together. Romance ensues, fake dating. It's a, it's a pretty fun time, I must say. I rated Dance with Thieves a four stars and Vow with Thieves a 4.5. The only reasons they didn't get a five star is the stakes were pretty low in both of these books. And I just would have liked a tad more action in these books. I read Hail Mary with my brother-in-law and sister for a little book club. And this was such a freaking good book. I honestly picked this one up based off of this YouTuber's video she did of recapping all of BookTuber's top picks from 2024. And this was one of them and it was so worth it. I've heard the audiobook is so amazing, but the book alone is just a splendid read. I don't wanna give too much away about this one because Finding it all out for yourself is so fun. But basically in this book, you just start, you start with our main character waking up, not really being able to speak or move all that well. They're hooked up to a bunch of wires in a spaceship and a lot ensues from there. If you like sci-fi at all, this is written by the same writer that wrote The Martian, which I haven't read yet. I need to go check that out, but just a super freaking talented writer. I have nothing but good things to say. They're also in the beginning phases of production for a movie of this. So go ahead, check it out now. So you can say I read the book before there was even a movie trailer out. Five stars all around. I've started the selection series. And if you've heard me talk about these, you know, I just say these are the reality trash TV of the book world. And I love them for that. There's really nothing to learn from them. They're just fun YA books that feel like you're watching The Bachelorette, but in a dystopian setting. And I can't complain about that. Three stars. Scythe. This is a never sci-fi book. This is why I say I love sci-fi and it's my favorite because all sci-fis I rate so high. I just, I love sci-fi series. I need more recommendations if you have them. This one honestly kind of came out of left field. You're following this world where no one dies anymore from old age. So they have scythes that kind of act like the Grim Reaper and take certain people out. And we're watching two scythes in training during this whole thing. There are some extra stakes added. There's a lot of really good plot twist in here and it's just such a fascinating world. And I cannot wait to continue this series. It was so fun. You guys would never know it if I didn't say anything, but my camera battery died. The best decision I ever made. Sorry, I had to put on my glasses because I'm blind as a bat to try to find the battery case. <laughs> the only... I'll get back to the batteries in a second. The only reason I don't wear glasses in videos, I wear them day to day. I honestly really like how they look on me. Just the ring light that I have reflects off of them really badly. So I don't like the look of them in videos. I just don't want you to think I don't like my glasses because I absolutely adore them. Um, anyways, battery, best decision I ever made. It makes filming long videos like this much easier. Okay, I then, <laughs> I should have mentioned this with Vow of Thieves, but I read that during a 24 hour period, but I read that during the start of it. Now, I also listened to The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue for an audiobook to help me get through that. If you want to watch that video in the chaos, click right here. It was honestly really funny to edit and film. <laughs> and I did have a good time just reading for 24 hours straight. I listened to a big chunk of that one during the 24 hour period. And I had to rush to finish it because I had to finish up another book for another video I was reading. But overall, I did enjoy it. It's a realistic fantasy book. You're following this girl who got a wish with a god slash demon-ish creature. And she wanted to live forever but she gets to live forever, except no one ever remembers her. And we're following her on this journey and a little romance ensues where this guy for some reason can see her and remember her. It's very, very interesting. And if you want a little magical realism book, great, great little read. I ended up giving it three stars. It wasn't anything mind blowing, but I had a good time. I also listened to Heavenbreaker on audiobook. This wasn't at the same time as Addie LaRue. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, now I love sci-fi. This was just a bad sci-fi book in my opinion. There are too many storylines. It didn't make sense. While I was listening to it, I wasn't able to connect the dots on what was going on. And you know, I may blame that on me not paying attention, but I was paying attention to this book. I really wanted to give it a good chance because gosh darn it, I wanted that book to be good so I could justify buying those gorgeous frayed edges, but I just, couldn't justify it for a book that I rated two stars. When I start rating books two stars, it means I did not like them. I did not vibe with them. And this was unfortunately one of those books. You're following this girl as she's getting into the elite class of the spacecraft that they're on because they had to 
evacuate Earth because of nukes and they have this robot fighting thing that all the elite people do and she snuck into it and she we start the book with her killing her dad and it's just there's too much going on the romance is not good it was compared to like fourth wing which it is just so not but I want to put this in here like I put it in the video I made about reading this book I thought it was such an interesting idea and I wish the author would have had more time to edit it make it how she wanted and I would consider picking up some of her books again. It just wasn't edited well enough and it ended up being a scrambled mess, unfortunately. But don't worry, I came back with a bang after reading that because then I read Mistborn. This is my first Brandon Sanderson and the only Brandon Sanderson book I have read to this day still. He is an author that is so worth the hype he gets. This series is so good. Know that if you truly want to sit down and read all of this series, it is going to take you probably months and especially if you want to get through all of his work years because he writes these amazingly detailed long books they're paced well enough where i'm interested the whole time if you don't know i have aphantasia so sometimes with books that have a lot of descriptions and take a long time to world build i lose interest because i can't really picture stuff in my head but he just did a perfect job where even somebody without a mind's eye was able to just fall in love with this world he's created. If you also have aphantasia, like can't see pictures or play movies in your head like some people say they can, which still just seems like witchcraft to me, but whatever. Comment that down below because I want to find more of us aphantasia readers. We're having a great time. I feel like people are really confused when I say I can't picture stuff and still enjoy reading, but it's, it's about the vibes. I love books with heavy dialogue. Mm, so good. Then I read Normal People. This is just a book about two not normal people that are just on the struggle bus the entire time. I had no fun reading this book. Two stars. <laughs> right after Normal People, the shortest book I read during this time, I think, I picked up Priory of the Orange Tree. This book is so big. But the best thing is, this book is technically the same length as this book. Are you kidding me? This is a really interesting high fantasy world. There's a lot of politics going on in here. Not too much action if that's what you're looking for. It's very politically world building driven. Um, you know, I really wanted to read this book because of the dragons and the dragon was not in a lot of the books. So I was a little disappointed, but I still like this book and gave it 3.5 stars. Unfortunately, I just don't remember that much of this book. It was so long. Just be ready for a long book if you're gonna read this. And also get it on a Kindle. Don't buy the physical book. This this is ridiculous. This is insane. I also read The Prince's Bride. This is just so good. If you haven't watched the movie, first off, how have you gotten through this much of life and not watched this movie yet? A masterpiece and one of my favorite movies. I finally read the book. This is actually a copy that my mom gave my dad, which is just so cute. There's a little note to him in the front of the book at it's so cute. <laughs> I had a really fun time reading this book and just seeing what one of my favorite movies was based off of. Very nostalgic. There were scenes that were like right out of the movie and it felt like I got some extra bonus scenes in here as well. This is a five star book and it's a five star movie as well. Are movies rated in 10 star normally? So 10 star movie? I don't know. Tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow. This is one of my few literary fictions and I love this book. You're following two game developers but it is so much more than that, but there's no good way to describe it. You really just have to read this book. This is the type of vibe I thought I was going to get from normal people and I found it in this book and I, I love this book. I love the characters. There are some amazing quotes in here and I gave it four stars. Just if you want a literary fiction and you're not a big literary fiction person already, maybe give this a try. Okay. Oh gosh. I'm talking about books for a long time. <laughs> we just recently got to my favorite time of year, which is when we get a new Karen McManus book. I adore every Karen McManus book I have ever read. She is just such a good murder mystery author. The pacing is perfect. It's super easy to read. It's just like a little escape from reality. They're all so perfect. And I think this just might be my favorite one. You're following this mother daughter team that is in a jewelry heist with this like adopted grandma figure in their life. And then our other character that we're following in here, Liam, is the son of 
the guy that the mother from the mother-daughter duo married for like 48 hours in Vegas. It's a very interesting dynamic in here and just, and this book had me on the edge of my seat screaming. I was jump scared from a book. I loved it. Five stars, five stars all around. And then that same weekend, we got The Grandest Games, which is an inheritance series book, but it's the start of a new series. But you do need to read Inheritance Games to get all the background. I guess you could just jump right into this series, but read Inheritance Games. It's super fun. And this one was so much fun. We get some new characters in here. We get some new romances in here and just new romantic dynamics. It's super fun. These books, again, it's just a super easy escape from reality. Great young adult book that just keeps you on your toes the entire time. All of this book is set in the time span of basically 24 hours, and I was never bored. I loved it so much. In most Jennifer Lynn Barnes books, apparently you're just following really smart people, and I am not a very smart person, so. I, I just came along for the vibes and had a great time overall. I wanna say some spoilers about this book that I really love, but I won't do that. Go check it out, and then, and then let me know to make a spoiler video about it, because I just, it made me giggle in a lot of places. It made me giggle, had me kicking my feet. Also, there's a character with aphantasia in this book, which I'd never seen aphantasia described from like a character's perspective. And it was so well done in this. I... It made me so happy to see. Cause it's such a little thing to include, but it was so interesting to see how she was describing how she would think through these complicated riddles where a lot of people use like their photo memory and how she would remember it. Fascinating. Overall gave this four stars, loved it. I have this book sitting here. I don't know if I read it in the last month or so, but Into the Water, it's another murder mystery thing. It's fine. I have no complaints against it. And then these are the last books I've read recently. The Twilight series. Go watch the video to see what I thought about them. I'm not talking about them anymore. I still have to finish editing the part two of this video while I'm filming this video, okay? I'll just, a spoiler alert, I didn't love them. But I did do a whole deep dive on them, so if you want to see me suffer, please go check it out. <laughs> With that downer of a last note on books, <laughs> I am so ready to start reading some other books. I feel like I'm in a bit of a reading slump from Twilight, but once I start reading some good books again, I think I'll be okay. That is my plan, to have a chill reading week and then I have another deep dive I want to do, so. chance I'll actually like the book in this deep dive though. So, so it may not be bad. <laughs> but I think that's all for today, folks. That's all for today, folks. <laughs> if you're still hanging around this late in the video, thank you so much. Please like, comment, subscribe. I had a great time filming this. I feel like the last time I sat down to film one of these, I had only been filming videos for like a month or so and I was so shy in it and was so worried about getting the plot of the book across and in this one it was just based all of the vibes, which is really just my channel and reviews in general from me. So if you like that, hit that subscribe button, stick around. And I hope y'all have a wonderful week and you have a fall full of wonderful, wonderful books. Let me know if you're adding any of the books in this video to your TBR. I'm so interested and give me some book recommendations for some fall books that I need to read. I'll see y'all in the next video for another chaotic reading vlog. Bye y'all.